John Allen should provide the done. evidence of his assertions. When we, when we have your responsibility, Secretary of State, not John Allen's. No, it's your you're, responsibility you're, you're, to regulate the market. That's what the Act, the Agriculture Act of 2020, does. It says that it's your responsibility. It's not my job under the Act to set prices. What I've already said Nobody to you. Nobody said that. And it's the about committee. profits. Barry, not Barry, let, let it's about I've said to you and answer. the committee. Now, on your last appearance before the committee, you and I uh, had a discussion about the reporting of 97% uh, increase in profits from pre pandemic levels that the supermarkets were making to post pandemic levels. And of course, if one were simply, if the supermarkets were simply passing on the increased supply chain costs, then you would anticipate that their profit levels would be approximately the same. The fact that they were 97% uh, above pre-pandemic levels gave rise to concern. I asked you about that at the time. Uh, I, had, I had understood you to have agreed to write to the committee on that point. When we wrote to ask you for your written response, the reply was that you hadn't agreed to write the committee in that response. But Mark Spencer, when he came before the committee, did agree. I, I have to say he, he actually then wrote back on a very different statistical basis. And I, I don't want to, uh, to, to rehearse the, the idea of lies, damn lies and statistics. But um, the point is this. Um, is point? You have powers. Uh, that you are able to exercise, and you also have powers under that Act that uh, allow you to require data from the food supply chain businesses to make regulations to promote fair contractual relationships. Um, how is it that you seek to apply those powers? Um, what statistics have you demanded from the supermarkets in order to uh, see whether you need to do that, and what monitoring are you doing of the supermarkets and the triggers that you would apply in order to use those powers to stop the excess profits that I believe they're making from the research, but also that John Allen, as chairman of Tesco, told Laura Kunzberg only two weekends ago, I think, uh, three weekends ago, um, that supermarkets were making excess profits. This is the chairman of one of our leading supermarkets saying that this is happening. So I think it's important that the public know what you're doing to prevent it. Well, I've already set out to the committee that we monitor markets through the UK Agricultural Market Monitoring Group and other forums. And I've already pointed out to the committee that we're doing some supply chain uh, reviews. Um, you know, there is an element here about uh, we have seen very competitive ways of how certain products from leading manufacturers have been delisted in attempt by some of the supermarkets to try and keep prices down. Um, I think uh, there are different ways uh, that supermarkets will make profits. They don't just often uh, do it through their food outlets. They uh, have extended their brand into a number of different uh, elements. Uh, that consumers wish to purchase with the power of the brands that they often have. Well, let me ask so, you bluntly, are you content that <coughs> post-pandemic profit levels are 97% higher than they were pre-pandemic and that that has arisen solely legitimately? Or do you agree with John Allen that excess profiteering is actually going on? <coughs> well, I'm, I'm not... I haven't um, observed uh, John Allen. Uh, I'm conscious of the question you've asked. I don't know if you've written to Tesco. I uh, will ask. I'm very happy I will write to Tesco. No, John, say, John Allen said specifically that Tesco were not doing it, but oh. that he believed that other supermarkets in the market were doing okay. it. Okay. Did he give any evidence on that? I've given. I'm a bit surprised. Well, I've uh, given you the evidence. Laura Kunzberg gave the evidence to John Allen. Um, and I'm a bit surprised that your officials and that your SPADs haven't given that evidence to you. If, if, if you would like more evidence, then I can certainly provide well, I, the statistics and John the information. John Allen should that provide the evidence of his assertions. When we, when we have your responsibility, Secretary of State, not John Allen's. No, it's your you're, responsibility you're, you're... to regulate the market. That's what the Act, the Agriculture Act of 2020, does. 
It says that it's your responsibility. It's not my job under the Act to set prices. What I've already said Nobody to you. Nobody said that. And it's the about committee. profits. Barry, not Barry, let, let it's about, I've said to Secretary you State and answer. the committee, we have instigated supply chain reviews. The dairy one, I think, is quite close to conclusion. The pig one is underway, and we're looking at some further sectors. So that's what we are doing. What I'm surprised at, Mr. Gardner, is that you are taking what John Allen, the chairman of a FTSE 100 PLC, says about other companies without any evidence and as makes that assertion and then expects me to investigate I'm sorry. his assertion made on the basis no, of I, I have no idea what. I didn't, I didn't ask you. Last time when you appeared before the committee, I gave you the statistics from the uh, independent investigations that had already been conducted. Um, that was the evidence that I gave to you. It was subsequently confirmed by John Allen on the Laura Coonsberg programme. So please don't make this an issue about John Allen. The statistics are there if you care to look at them. And I said to you, and I've said it again today, they make it in a different ways uh, using their brands. And have I looked into the individual accounts of Tesco PLC? No, I haven't. Are you, are you satisfied? But, My question was very simple. I've I said, are you satisfied, I'm satisfied. That, the, that the profit levels that are being made post-pandemic as compared with pre-pandemic are being incurred without excess well, profiteering? Well, as I have said to you, we have instigated yes supply, no chain reviews, supply chain reviews because we are looking at aspects of that, uh, but I have not investigated Tesco PLC's um, individual it's accounts. not about Tesco. Well, you, it is. Please, you're just throwing distraction into, I, I, into the committee. Please try and focus on the question that I asked. So which, which supermarkets do you believe are making excessive profits? The top three. So that includes Tesco? No, they're not. They, they weren't the top Are they not in the top three? No, not, they weren't actually, no. But I'll, I think, I'll provide Barry, you with the probably, I think we probably need to move on. I mean, if there were, we'll pose this question to Mark Spencer. He said we have a competitive supermarket sector in this country, and they all claim to have cheaper prices than each other. So if the market isn't actually functioning because they're, they're not competing for customers, that is something maybe that you should be looking at, because you know, is it a cosy club where, where they're, they're happy to mm, keep their profits company, at, yeah. at, at levels higher than, than before the pandemic? That, that's basically what, what Barry was asking. You know, do we really have competition in the supermarket sector, or are they sort of content to make profits and not really part their tanks on each other's lawns? Going back to it, as I said earlier, the proportion of income spent on food is considerably lower than most of other countries. I think the US is only the one that comes in comparison. A lot of that is driven by the competition between um, the supermarkets. Now, I'm very <coughs> conscious of the, then the supply chain aspects and what that means for our growers and producers. So that's why I've instigated those reviews. But I'm, uh, how can I put it? You know, the price matches that happen between comp in competition between uh, different supermarkets. I don't think it's a surprise to people that Quite often in retail, people will make very low margin on certain products to get people in through the door where they place their products around the supermarket. It's all designed in order to draw people in and to uh, Final question, then, Secretary of State. Given the continued high rate of food inflation, moving away from profits yeah. and profiteering, given the high rate of food, what steps will the government take to support households when the current support packages expire? Well, as you know, the government has uh, added an extra uh, household support programme in order to help people, particularly on universal credit. Uh, so that is going ahead, and uh, that is an important element of it. At the same time, uh, we are investing to try and make sure we have energy security so that we are able to start to bring down um, structurally the cost of supply of energy, um, which will help our economy. And uh, that's... Uh, but the support, as you know, for energy does expire, uh, I think, commercially, principally, um, in comparison to what has been enjoyed by businesses in the last uh, six months. Um, but all of those elements, uh, we will continue to work and see where there are other opportunities we can take, like we've done in the past, like removing the tariffs on certain uh, feedstock and similar. Uh, but that's all going to be part of uh, ongoing direct financial support going into... I think it's between the 25th of, about around about the 20th of April 
uh, people on universal credit will be receiving that support directly into their bank accounts. So that's real cash help to people on the lowest incomes in society.